Hillary Clinton there responding to a question by Greenpeace climate change activists. The Democratic frontrunner is accusing the Bernie Sanders campaign of lying about her, but Senator Sanders is not backing down. According to an analysis done by Greenpeace, Hillary Clinton's campaign and her super PAC have received more than $4.5 million from the fossil fuel industry. In fact, 57 oil, gas, and coal industry lobbyists have directly contributed to her campaign, with 43 of them contributing the maximum allowed for the primary. And these are not just workers in the fossil fuel industry, these are paid, registered lobbyists. Secretary Clinton, you owe our campaign an apology. We were telling the truth. Well, now for a closer look at Hillary Clinton. Her resume is impressive. Her experience virtually unrivaled in the presidential race. But many people just don't find her likable. Jonathan Mann reports. She doesn't seem very warm. She doesn't seem very genuine. She has a lot of baggage. and uh, She doesn't appear honest. Uh, people haven't liked her for years. I hate to say it's just her personality, which is just not a fair thing to say because she's a woman and she comes off as kind of serious. You hear a lot on the news about her yelling. They are impressions that barely scratch the surface of Hillary Clinton's decades in public life. But they are deep-seated, and for Clinton, they are a problem. Hillary Clinton has been many things. A middle-class girl from the north side of Chicago, a Yale scholar, the first lady of Arkansas, and then the first lady of the United States. After a tumultuous eight years in the White House, she would go on to serve as senator from New York, the only first lady to ever hold the post. And then in 2007, she became a candidate for president herself. She has worn many hats and famously many pantsuits, and she is judged for her clothes, her hair, her marriage, her integrity, and something much more basic, her okay. likability. Uh, you're likable no. enough. Thank Hillary, you so no much. A CBS New York Times poll found that 52% of voters have an unfavorable view of her. Donald Trump, perhaps the most polarizing politician in America today, is disliked by only slightly more voters, 57%. There have been questions, scandals, investigations, about a land development deal from her days in Arkansas, known as Whitewater. About the deadly attack on a U.S. diplomatic outpost in Benghazi, Libya, when she was Secretary of State. About her decision to handle her government communications on a private email server. What do all the episodes have in common? No wrongdoing was ever proven, but she was never able to wash away the stain of scandal. The problem with Hillary Clinton isn't the substance. The problem is the style. The problem is, is she the person you want to have a beer with? And then, of course, there was Monica Lewinsky, her husband's relationship with a White House intern that nearly brought down his presidency. It's important to remember that Bill Clinton is still one of the most popular living American politicians. But the, the downside is those scandals. And, and to the extent that mentions of Monica Lewinsky dredge up a lot of memories that people would not like to relive. There may be something else. Maybe many Americans are just uncomfortable with a woman as successful and fiercely ambitious as Hillary Clinton. Years ago, she identified the problem. I suppose I could have stayed home and baked cookies. She, again, has already competed in the presidential primary eight years ago. She has been the Secretary of State of the United States. By the way, the third female Secretary of State in the United States. So at this point, I don't think it's sexism. Supporters insist Clinton is still judged unfairly. So this will be a big test for the country and whether or not we're able to look past all of these cultural, uh, social and media biases and look at the, the person, the individual, their leadership traits and what they bring to the conversation. That's the big test that she will have to pass. Compare her to some of the most important men in her life today. Clinton is not credited with Bernie Sanders' honesty, Donald Trump's candor, or her husband's magnetism. But she is doggedly working towards the Democratic presidential nomination. And as she approaches the general election, she will at some point have to convince Americans that she can be the first female president of the United States, whether they like her or not. Jonathan Mann, CNN.
Time for our analysis of the U.S. presidential race. I'm joined now by Larry Sabato, the founder and director of the University of Virginia Center for Politics. He joins me via Sky from Charlottesville, Virginia. Great to have you with us as always. Uh, Larry, firstly, I mean, you heard that piece by Jonathan Mann, and you heard earlier uh, when Hillary Clinton was quite angry talking to a protester. Now, it seems when, when a male politician gets angry, they come across as passionate, as strong. Uh, when a female politician gets angry, as Clinton did, some make it seem like she's out of control. Uh, do you think she was aware she was being filmed in that case? And what should we make of the female-male kind of politics at play? Well, first of all, um, she must have known she was being filmed because the first thing you learn in presidential politics is you're always being filmed. Uh, videotape is everywhere today, and everybody's got an iPhone focused on the candidate. But that's not what's really important. I think you put your finger on something that is critical here. Hillary Clinton is judged by very different standards than some of the other candidates. Some of it's unfair, Linda. Some of it's based purely on her gender on her uh, gender. But there are other pieces of it that make sense in terms of her history. Remember, she has been in the headlines virtually every day for 25 years. There have been dozens of major and minor scandals, gaffes, controversies. That all takes a toll, not just on her image, but on her, the human being. So you think at play is as much the scandals that she's gone through as much as it is a gender thing? It's a long history, and some of the people in Jonathan Mann's package said as much. You know, they're, they're remembering things from the 80s and the early 90s and the late 90s and the, and the first decade of this century. There, there are just so many pieces to Hillary Clinton, and there are so many pieces of her past that relate to the present. Uh, moving on and looking at Donald Trump and his abortion comments, for a Republican candidate, uh, shouldn't he have a set position on this sorted? Of course. It's, it's just another incredible part of Donald Trump. He has done so little preparation. Uh, I'm sure people abroad recognize it in terms of his foreign policy or lack of it. There's no nuance. There's no subtlety. And in fact, in many cases, no position at all. On domestic policy, one would have thought that he would have absorbed more than this in his 69 years. He has not. And looking at uh, the other Republican candidates, Ted Cruz seems to be ignoring Kasich. But given Kasich has only won one state, what is his role in the Republican race? John Kasich is a long shot, but you don't want to eliminate him simply because there are only three candidates who are active and have delegates. There are, there are at least one candidate, maybe two, that will keep their delegates even though they've dropped out. But Kasich is a long shot to get the nomination if this goes to multi-ballots, you know, the fourth or fifth ballot. The Kasich people are talking about the fourth or fifth ballot. The delegates can get tired. They can realize they have to return home and get back to business, whatever that may be. So it's a long shot, but you can't totally rule it out. So he will stay in it until the convention at the very least? I believe so, and he has a good argument. Of the three fi finalists, he's the only one with any reasonable shot of winning in November. Normally that would be powerful, but this year electability seems to have almost no relationship to the reality of the Republican battle. It certainly is a campaign like we haven't seen before. Larry Sabato, great to have you with us. Thank, Thank you. you